that the Lord gave us when we came into the land that he had provided for us. Take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them after that they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. So let's read some more. So when you look at how they're talking about these success consciousness, the new thought theories and all the things like that, that they brought into the churches, the Lord told us not to follow after their gods or even inquire as how they served. Not to find out what they're doing. Oh, I want to know what they're doing over there. I want to know, they seem like they got wealth. How did they get their wealth? How did they get their money? Well, see, this is what you do. We call it this, and you just repeat it over and over, and the universe calls it to you through the power of your being and visualization. The scriptures tell us we wasn't supposed to even go after that. But it goes on and shows how, how it works when it talks about the definitions and clarifications about the law of attractions and how it manifests. It is not enough to just wish for something. You need strong desire and faith to manifest what you want. So in short, if you want that Lincoln Town Car or that new Bentley, then you have to desire it, which the scriptures call covet. You have to covet it enough with earnest desire and repeat it over and over again till you manifest it in your life. Witchcraft. It's in order for your thoughts to manifest, you have to repeat them often, add feeling, desire, and interest. So we're looking at this and it's like, hmm, that sounds very familiar. But we're not talking about New Age religion, are we? Because we're reading about New Age religion right now, but that's not where you see this. Where do you see this? You in see it church. in the church. Mm, mm, mm. That's what they're doing in the church. In the church. Call it to you. Put your hands forward and ask for those keys to that car. Your mansion is paid for. Your bills are paid by supernatural debt cancellation. You got your new car. So where's that coming from? We just read Matthew the 6th chapter. We read it in Luke. We read all the way through that that was never a doctrine that Christ gave us. It is a wicked, satanic, evil doctrine that was brought into the church so that people that are covetous and people that are greedy for filthy lucre can make money upon money upon money by mer making merchandise of people that do not know the scriptures. So let me let me just get this straight and just so I'm clear. Those affirmations and everything that you were reading came straight from the New Age religion? Yeah, that wasn't from a religious website. That was from websites dealing with the New Thought Movement. So that's the cult and New Age religion and Which let's call got, it what it is, Satan worship. Satan worship is came from the it's going into the it's going into you asking the universe and the creative consciousness of the universe to give you these blessings. But in the churches, they're doing it and saying that it's God giving it to you. So we're going to go into that in a second to see if it really is God giving it to you. But the interesting thing about it, and we're, get, we're going to go into this a little, go into more of this for a second. But when they started calling, we already read that according to their own admission, it's been around since ancient times. But they characterized it and gave it a name since the early 1900s with the New Thought Movement in 1904 through 1910. And interestingly enough, it got a lot more interest with Oprah and books like The Secret and things like that, where they, re where they bring all these same things back, talking about how is the how are the universe giving you these things. So I'll go into this one thing, then we'll jump right back into the scriptures. The three part, the three steps that they go to in the secret are ask, believe, and receive. And the asking part, 
Know what you want and ask the universe for it. I didn't see nothing about God in there, about the Most High or Christ. But that's what they're doing. Know what you want and ask the universe for it. There is, this is where you need to be to get clear on what it is you want to be created and visualize what you want as being real and possible. So, in other words, be specific. You're not asking for, I don't want my daily bread. I want a cheeseburger with lettuce and tomatoes with fries, and tomorrow I want filet mignon, and the day after that I want salmon, and now with the, the mansion, and now yeah, in my mansion that I'm and I, that I drove to in my new Lexus. That's what it means by the specifics. So that was ask. Now believe, feel, and behave as if the object of your desire is on its way. Focus your thoughts and your language on what it is that you want to attract. You want to feel the feeling of really knowing that you have what, what you desire is on its way. Even if you have to trick yourself into believing it, do it. Mm, mm, mm. So, read Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 again. Matthew 6. Verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, read verse 21 in the same verse, same chapter. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So your mind is going to be where your treasure is, and the Lord tells whispers to seek first the kingdom of God. So what about focus your thoughts and your language on what it is you want to attract? If you want to feel that you want to feel uh, with the feeling of really knowing that it's what you desire is on its way, even if you have to trick yourself. The final part: receive, be open to receiving it. Pay attention to your intuitive messages, synchronicities, signs from the universe to you that help is on the way, and the assurance that you are on the right path as you align yourself with the universe and open yourself to receiving the very thing you are wanting to manifest will show up. Nothing about aligning yourself with the Most High and His commandments. Nothing about making sure you're in line with the Heavenly Father and the Scriptures. Nothing about aligning yourself with this Bible. But all about what you want. Well, let's see what the Scripture says about what we want. Go to the book of Romans. Wow. Romans chapter 8. Why are you getting there? I'm just thinking how that formula is the exact same formula that they're doing in the churches right now. Mm -hmm. Except they're claiming that they're asking God, God for it. Well, they are asking their God. Because the thing is, we're going to prove what God they're asking for. It. Go to the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 26. Romans 8, verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. So stop right there. How is it that we're going to be asking the universe for all these specifics? I, want, I specifically want this. I specifically want that. I specifically want it this way. I specifically want that. I want my house here. I want my car here. I want my food here. I want my new job here. The scriptures tell us we don't even know what we're supposed to be asking for. We know not what we ought to pray for. Thus saith the Lord. That's why, the, that's why they came to Christ and said, teach us how to pray. Why did they come and say, teach us how to pray? Because they didn't know how to pray. Because if it was up to us, we'd ask for everything we want when the Lord told us how to pray for all the things that we need. So that's why it goes right back in Romans, the 8th chapter, and it says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So there are things that we need. There are things that we need in our life. There are things that we need for 
from the Lord to do, to do for us. There are pains that we are going through, afflictions that we go through, which might be so deep and intense that we can't even put it into words. We can't even verbalize to the Lord a lot of the times the things that we need in our life. But it doesn't matter. Why? Because the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ that is within us, is what's making intercession for us to the Father, making sure that we're getting the things that we need. To help our infirmities, our weaknesses, the things that we lack in serving the Lord, the things that are keeping us from serving the Lord to our full potential, that's what that spirit is there helping us do. Not to get rich. Yeah, and a lot of things when it, when it talks about helping our infirmities, when it talks because everything that the Most High is dealing with, as far as prayer is concerned, is as it relates to building godly character. And and He tells you the same way in Matthew the sixth chapter that all of those carnal aspects that's that's secondary that takes a back a back seat. The primary thing we want us to be praying on and focusing on. Is as it relates to building godly character. Because all the things that relate to our infirmity is going to tie right, right back into the, the fruits of the spirit. Go right back into the woman who had physical infirmity and all of the people that Christ is healing. He was saying that your what has made you whole? Your faith has made you whole. You go right back into Galatians, that's one of the fruits of the spirit. So it's always going to be tying back into the fruits of the spirit and it's actually, those are the things that's going to be multiplied a hundred and fifty, whatever and as those things grow, we get closer and closer to the Most High. His image is character. And that's what the Most High is seeking to do through Christ and will achieve. But the way these people set it up, you turn all the attention away from the Most High, His commandments and the kingdom, and it's completely diverted to your lust in the earth. And the next verse is going to even go further into that. Romans chapter 8, verse 27. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercessions for the saints according to the will of God. So that's what the brother just now brought out. That when that spirit is making intercession for us, it's not doing it according to our will. Mm -hmm. It's asking according to the will of God, which means that, guess what? That new job that you might desire I'm just going to desire and covet it until it comes to me. That's not according to the will of God. That might not be for you. The Lord probably got something much better lined up for you. Or something that's not going to lead you into a corruption. Because you're praying in the prayer that the Lord Jesus Christ told us not to be led into temptation, to be protected from evil. Do you know how much evil the Lord is protecting us from daily and a lot of the jobs we don't get? So it ain't a matter of, oh, if I covet it enough and I act like I got it already, if I name it and claim it, that I got it. The scripture says it's going to be according to the will of God. I want money. I need riches. The scripture says it's going to be according to the will of God. And it's going to explain about that, how that, where that corruption comes from. So read on verse 28 and we'll finish up in Romans and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are called and read it again and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are the called according to his purpose so when you look at that that's where the faith comes in the faith comes in knowing that if we serve the Lord all things are working for the good. You might lose your job. Well, guess what? Somehow, that's going to work toward the good. You might have different afflictions in your life. Somehow, that's going to work toward the good. When you read the scriptures, was it always clear to how forefathers how it was going to work toward the good? No. Look at Joseph. Joseph was sold into slavery. Spent years in prison in Egypt before the Lord elevated him to Lord of the entire kingdom and used him to provide a safe place for his family to live and a safe haven during the time.